everybody. Today we're going to talk about the three aspects of getting what's considered to be a technically perfect shot. What you need to get a technically perfect shot is really just the right amount of light on your subject. And to get a right amount of light, there's only three things you can play with. So we're going to talk about all three briefly today, and then next week we're going to start talking each of, about each of them separately. So those three things are aperture, shutter speed, and ISO. And I'm going to explain each of them one by one. Aperture is really the opening in the back of the lens. The bigger the opening, the more light can come in. So the way it works is your aperture can, can be really, really closed, which is like a little tiny circle, so all the light particles have to go through that circle. Or it can be really, really open, and all the light particles can go through that circle. Obviously, the more open, the more light can go in at once. And that's really, really important, because when you're in somewhere where there's low light, you want to open it as wide as you can, so more light can come in at the same time. All right, so that's aperture. And then the second one is shutter speed. The shutter speed, basically the way this works is at the very back of your camera, there's something called a, a sensor. And that's a little chip where when the light hits it, it draws the image. It, it actually burns the image, but you know what I mean. So it creates the image. So that chip is the one that's sitting there waiting for the light to come in. And normally there's a little flap in front of that that stops any light from coming in. So what happens is when you click that button on top of your camera, that's, that little flap opens up and it lets the light in through your aperture, okay? So the shutter speed is how long that flap stays open for, okay? So let's say that flap stayed open, that would be 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, and then it would close back down. So it would open 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, close back down, okay? So the, the slower your shutter speed, the more light actually comes in. The problem with this is that as the shutter speed is, as the shutter is open for the long duration, if your subject is moving, let's say it's a car, it will actually get the car moving so when what'll happen is when you get your picture it'll be a blurry car because it'll try to take a picture of it for every millisecond that it moves I'll explain this more as we go to shutter speed but basically the one thing you want to remember is you would like to have your shutter speed be as fast as possible so ideally you want it open closed and that's it and in that millisecond it captures enough light to be able to draw your image and that's really really important the third one is ISO ISO is really the sensitivity of your chip so the higher your ISO, the more sensitive it will be to light, which means it needs less light to be able to draw the image. The problem with having a high ISO is that it will actually make your image grainy. So if you've ever seen those images that have a lot of grain on them and they're not very sharp, that's really because the ISO was very, very high. And sometimes when there isn't enough light, you don't have a choice. You have to actually increase your ISO. So we're going to talk about each of these three things, aperture, shutter speed, and ISO separately. But I wanted to give you an example that basically kind of displays them all together and, and explains why and how they work together. Um, think about a canvas. Um, think of the canvas as your light sensor. So it's the sensor that's in the back of the camera. So this canvas is, is white and it's ready waiting to be painted, quote unquote, taking a picture. And then basically your camera is similar to a spray paint, okay? So the spray paint has a nozzle and the opening of the nozzle is the same as your aperture. So the wider your nozzle is, the more paint can come out at one time. So that's the same thing as having a wide aperture. So if your aperture is really, really big, more light can come in. Okay, so imagine if you had a, a, a spray paint with a tiny, teeny, teeny nozzle, we'd have to spray it for a lot longer for it to actually be able to spray onto the canvas. So the duration that you spray for, the, long, the length of the spray paint, is actually your shutter speed. How long you have to sit there and press this paint is how long your shutter speed has to stay open for the same amount of paint to be on your canvas. Okay, so think of the width of the nozzle as an aperture and think of the amount of time you spray as your shutter speed. And then ISO is really the sensitivity of your canvas. You know, depending on what quality canvas you get and whether it's primed or not, you don't need to have as much paint to have the same kind of picture on there. So ISO is sort of like that. It basically, incre as, the, as higher your ISO goes, it increases the sensitivity of your photo. So when you're trying to think, so when you see this example, you can see how all three of them matter, right? So if, you're, if the nozzle of your spray paint is kind of small, then obviously you have to spray for longer. So if your aperture is kind of closed, obviously you have to have your shutter speed there open longer for the same amount of light to come in. So that's why it's important for aperture, shutter speed, and ISO to play together when you're trying to figure out what the best way to create an image is. And next week we're going to start with aperture and we're going to talk about depending on different light situations, what your aperture should be and how you can optimize your aperture so that you get the correct amount of light in there. And then the week after, we're going to talk about the shutter speed and the different things you can do if you're stuck with having low light and not able to play with the aperture enough. And then on the third week, we're going to talk about ISO and what are different ways you can play with your ISO. 
All right, I hope this makes sense. If you have any questions about each of these things separately, please leave me a comment so I can make sure that when I'm taping that video, I can explain it to you. And um, I hope you have a great day.